Hello, my name is Tel Emil. I'm a UNESCO Chair in Distance Education, and I'm here to tell you a bit about uh, open tools for uh, development of open educational resources. So if you look at the field of open education, uh, and we think about what makes open educational resources particularly interesting and different from traditional uh, educational resources, there are basically two characteristics. The first one is that we use open licenses. So we give legal permissions for people to do a variety of things with our resources. And this can include things like being able to download the resource, make changes to it, translate it, uh, post it somewhere else. And it gives a lot of flexibility for people to use and manipulate these resources. And that's a great first thing that we need to have. The second aspect are open formats. And open formats are the technical side of uh, openness for the open education resources, which we have to pay attention to. So when you create a file, when you create a resource, an educational resource, one of the important things to think about is what file format you're using to save and to create that file in. Uh, if you create it in a format that's not open, it's going to make it much harder for other people to be able not only to see the file, but perhaps modify and change and revise and remix that file to add their own contributions to that content. One of the easiest ways to engage with open formats is to use free and open source software, which is software you can generally download and install for free, and they use open formats from the beginning, uh, from the start. They're meant to be using open formats. And if you, for example, use a free and open source software to create a video, uh, you can share your source files with someone else and they'll be able to pick up where you left and continue working on that video or that document that you created because they're using software that uses the same formats as you. And these software can be downloaded and used for free. The third aspect to consider is digital rights. It's an integral part of open education. Most of what we do in, in open education and when dealing with open educational resources is going to be in some form involved in, uh, in a digital platform, uh, whether it's because you've developed something for a learning management system or a website, but if you develop any sort of content like video or a presentation or a document, you're going to have to post it somewhere and make it available somehow. Then it becomes important to think about issues like privacy, data collection, advertisements, uh, how do we interface these things that are so common in our social life to the world of education? Are we requesting on your platform, are you requesting uh, personal information for people, a registration? Uh, does the platform where you post your videos, does this serve content like advertisement? Um, these are issues that we really should consider when we're dealing with open education resources. We want to minimize as much as we can these risks to the user and really preserve their digital rights. And finally, this leads to a much easier introduction to open educational practices, right? So OER can really be a, an integral part of open educational practices. If we're dealing with the online environment and digital environments, preserving people's uh, digital rights is very important. And it becomes easier to get into uh, an open educational practice, which is, our, I think, our ultimate goal. So this leads us uh, to open educational practices. So using uh, open educational resources and, and integrating open educational res resources into your practice and respecting people's digital rights, using open software, uh, free and open soft source software, really helps you get closer to open educational practices, to be able to start working in a community of people working on existing educational resources, developing new resources, remixing other people's content, and really building a community around the process of uh, creating and remixing uh, open educational resources. And there are a number of tools and places where this can happen. And I'd like to go ahead and show you some of these examples next. So we can start with uh, just the idea of developing uh, uh, collaborative writing, for example. Well, this is one of the very exciting tools that we can use to create resources. And uh, a great example to start out with, which is a fairly simple but very powerful tool, is, is Etherpads. Etherpads are hosted in many different instances, and we'll post some of these links for you to, to uh, see and to create your Etherpad. But it's a very lightweight platform for dozens of people to collaborate in real time, creating documents together. And it's a great place for you to uh, use at a conference, to, uh, to sketch down some notes uh, with other people at a conference or doing a class, or to just get students to write together and create some preliminary version of a document uh, in even in very low bandwidth situations and uh, very quickly to set up. And these are available in many places and you can explore them later. If you want to do something a little bit more structured, most people are familiar with uh, Wikipedia, but they don't know that there's another place, what's called the Wikiversity, for people to uh, engage in research projects or educational projects where you can create your own space for your own class and have students create and collaborate around wiki pages. So here's one example of, of uh, something I use in my classes regularly. It becomes a, a really large uh, database or a repository of content that students can improve upon 
on every semester and look at what other students have done and collaborate together on creating resources and remixing resources that other students have done over the years. And as you move forward, these things grow to become a really large uh, repository of knowledge for the students to use and, and to create reusable assignments. This becomes a really interesting place to work collaboratively. If you want to publish content uh, more in more structured formats uh, when you know when content is already ready to be shared with people in a more structured formats there are many platforms to do that that are open source and free and open source one of them is wordpress which is incredibly popular and at wordpress.com you can create a site uh, to do this for yourself but there are other sites that are uh, platforms that are uh, really intriguing and interesting that a lot of people don't know about one of them is pub pub PubPub is a, a great platform aimed at collaboration uh, and it's uh, meant to provide spaces for discussion and feedback and versioning of your, of your texts and again many people can collaborate and create some pretty powerful sites uh, and pretty well designed sites that are really the product of collaboration. Another open source, free and open source software that allows you to create some uh, exciting projects around this idea of open educational practice. Finally, if you want not necessarily to create resources, but you want to curate resources and bring things together uh, collaboratively to decide, say, a collection of resources that are particularly interesting for a field uh, you're working in on a project your students are working in, uh, one great place to do that is Omeka. It's a platform that's fairly lightweight. You can host it yourself, you can pay for hosting, but it's a free and open source software where you can create collections of resources and share them with open licenses for people to use and reuse. It's another great activity. Curation can become another great activity to do collaboratively as part of open practice. You can create projects like the Museum of Refused and Unrealized Projects or all sorts of other cool ideas that you can check out at omeka.net and omeka.com. Once you create a lot of resources, uh, you might think about creating a course around it or a module. And either for uh, teachers or students, whenever they want to create a, a course, one of the great alternatives is to use Moodle. And one of the great places to explore and to create uh, your own course is Open Learn Create, which is uh, a well-established platform by the Open University, where you can create your own course based on Moodle with a lot of resources and make, them, uh, make that course or that module available for other people to use. As an example, there's this course on playwriting for children. It was developed by a colleague from India, which is available on Open Learn Create, and you can create your own, or your students can create them as well. Finally, I just want to end with some specific tools they can use to create uh, specific resources, specific type of resources. And one of them is Audacity, which is an incredibly uh, popular tool to create audio. Uh, files. Uh, this is used by podcasters everywhere. Uh, so if you're interested in creating podcasts or other types of audio files, Audacity is a fantastic tool. And in the spirit of the other ones that I've just mentioned, it's free and open source software. Everybody can download and use for free in multiple platforms. Uh, and it's uh, used by people to, to create audio in all sorts of contexts. And it's a great tool and easy to use tool for students as well. The same can be said for OpenShot. If you're interested in creating videos, Another free and open source tool that can be used to create videos with transitions and uh, all sorts of animations. You can do it uh, many sophisticated things with OpenShot, but it's a fairly easy tool to use as well. Another great piece of software is OBS Studio, and it's fantastic to create videos such as the one we're uh, doing here today. Having uh, lectures recorded where you can show, for example, uh, a set of slides and show your face as you're speaking or show s a number of tracks together uh, to record lessons, live videos or uh, uh, streaming uh, sessions as well. And it's also open source, uh, free and open source software that you can use. And finally, as I mentioned, in the end, you really should consider whenever you create these resources, whether they're videos or, or audio files or documents, uh, pay close attention to where you're sharing these videos and make sure you, you share them uh, as best as you can with uh, open licenses and open formats. And I'll just leave you with one final tip, which is a great place for you to, to share files is the Internet Archive. Uh, of course, there are many others. And this is a great repository where you can share uh, files in multiple formats. You can select Creative Commons licenses, for example, for your resources, and they become available to everybody so that they can see, uh, use, and hopefully remix and modify resources and share them for the, forward so that other people can do that as well. This was a very quick introduction to uh, creating uh, open education resources. Uh, we started out talking a little bit about some of these principles that I think are really important when you're thinking about your, your the creating resources. And then uh, an overview of some platforms and tools that you can experiment with, free and open source platforms and tools uh, that you can use to create and share resources.